everyone just trusted the food system and the system the food system had become very industrialized yeah. so I started reading labels and that's kind of where the consciousness really began you know I just like I read every label of everything that I bought and I started to realize what was in everything and then from there I stopped getting sick and I started counting the months and I was like wow I should get be on antibiotics every three to four months and it just three months six months nine months and it started to fill me with like stoke and excitement and like hope and uh, I was uh, that's where the excitement came because you know when you when you're struggling with something and you overcome it suddenly you fueled with this passion and you want to understand it more and then the journey became like began and I just started sponging information I started reading books listening to podcasts searching the internet and, and that happened for like six years of solid just sponging information daily and f- fueling this hunger to learn more about something I was so passionate about until was it was Thanks for, for doing this impromptu podcast with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, um, I, after chatting to Joel, there's two reasons I was like, yes, I've got to do this. Because first of all, anybody that knows Joel, I know is going to be a really cool person <laughs> and have a cool story. And when she told me that you were the founder and creator of Wazoogles, um, I legit had a moment where I was like, no way. Because <laughs> <laughs> as, as I said to you earlier, I've actually have been using your product for a few years. I, uh, yeah, I've been traveling up to West Africa. I used to take my suitcase full of Wazoogles. Uh, I'd spend two months at a time in West Africa and I'd be adding that to my shakes and my oats. And I honestly love what you've created. Thank so you. That makes me happy. I'm glad. I'm glad. So to kick this off, I'm genuinely interested in your background story and how you got to the point where you decided I'm going to create a product like this that is now growing and becoming a really great brand. What, what, there must be a, or a story behind that, and but about your background, if we can start there. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a story behind it. Um, you know, um, I was basically struggling with my health, you know, not in a terrible way, but my immune system, it, you know, everyone has their own, um, their own perspective on what's affecting them and how much, how much it, you know, gets them down. And I, I was just getting sick all the time. Colds and flus, antibiotics, I think that my GP was prescribing me with way too many antibiotics. I think antibiotics are there for a great reason when you really need them, but they're overprescribed worldwide. And um, I wasn't really eating um, as well as I could have, but I also wasn't eating terribly unhealthy. I was eating fairly normally. And um, I met a naturopath at a health shop, random. I wasn't even searching, but I guess sometimes subconsciously you are searching, and that's how you know these things happen. Mm. And we did a... Um, I was just going on surf trips all the time. I was always sick. I was always cold and flu and my mates were always like making fun of me like sick boy and like da 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 and after a while I just became like really over it. So I went to an ENT, ears, ear, nose, throat specialist. I did the scope, they did everything and they ascertained that there was definitely like um, excess of um, sort of I guess mucus if I can be direct being generated and, and, and a post nasal drip flowing down the back of the throat all the time but they couldn't really understand why so they said maybe a blood allergy test did that and they were like oh well doesn't seem like you're allergic to anything specifically I guess it can be one of like a million things in your environment tell you what why don't you take this nose spray and it should sort you out so I said okay cool well how long do I have to take it for and they were like um yeah you take that permanently but don't worry it's cool we give it to our kids as well so it's like totally safe you know and I was like but this is this is medicine it's not a natural product so that immediately just didn't resonate with me. And I, I, I met this naturopath. I did a blood uh, microcirculation um, and iridology when they look at the arteries on your, in your, ring, your wedding ring finger mm-hmm. and um, through some grapeseed extract oil and a microscope. And then I, I did some iridology, which is the study of health and the body through the eyes. Okay. And um, I just, yeah, I was just inspired by this guy and I started... Uh, cutting out all of the the, the, the um, uh, processed foods from my diet, um, anything which had to like I did, first did like a big cleanse and detox, which yeah. anything with an oast, fructose, sucrose, just everything, and then eventually after two months, I slowly started to add fruit and sugar back in. I just reset my system for two months, and from there, I, I, I was reading the the main thing is it was twenty I don't even know twenty ten, and I was it was a, uh, quite ahead of the curve with regards to like my social circles, everyone I knew, they weren't really 
as vigilant with regards to like understanding everyone just trusted the food system and the system the food system had become very industrialized yeah. so I started reading labels and that's kind of where the consciousness really began you know I just like I read every label of everything that I bought and I started to realize what was in everything and then from there I stopped getting sick and I started counting the months and I was like wow I should get be on antibiotics every three to four months and it just three months six months nine months and it started to fill me with like stoke and excitement and like hope and uh, I was uh, that's where the excitement came because you know when you when you're struggling with something and you overcome it suddenly you fueled with this passion and you want to understand it more and then the journey became like began and I just started sponging information I started reading books listening to podcasts searching the internet and, and that happened for like six years of solid just sponging information daily and f fueling this hunger to learn more about something I was so passionate about until Wazoogles was born. That's incredible. And y your story is definitely something I've, I've, I've heard more and more occurring where people are starting to kind of take back responsibility for their own health and start to question what's... Because you grow up and, and you just accept the way things are in terms of what you eat, what you drink, what you put in your system, how you live. And until something sets you off on a path, like, actually, let's, let's see what's going on here with all of this. And um, for, for you to do to go through that and realize, I think that like we touched on it earlier with the Western medicine, it's very much rooted in, we're going to solve your problem for you and yeah. you know, don't take, don't do anything. Yeah. And it's getting us into some dark places at the moment. And I yeah. think a lot of people are really, really sick and uh, there's something to be said for all of these quote unquote, holistic, natural remedies that are actually where all the power is at and, and, and the stuff that you put in your body and the superfood that you guys are doing and yeah. uh, tell me about that like the the, the birthing of Wazoogles did you decide was it something that you were taking in product wise that you decided I'm going to take this and create a product or yes. yeah tell me about well, that like, that process it was like you know I just started spending all my off time and weekends like making all chocolates and um, making superfood mixes and smoothie bowls and I was like if you could see it on the internet I was trying it I made everything I tried everything and I loved the process and I was like so passionately connected and I was just geeking out in the kitchen and then I found my favorites as you do my go-to's and I found that there was I was surfing a lot I was exercising a lot I found there was a gap for something that I wanted every single morning which had like a combination of nutrient dense superfoods and plant-based proteins that tasted good that didn't have any like artificial flavoring in it and it didn't make it didn't make my stomach feel weird like all the protein shakes out there made my stomach feel weird i won't get into the details <laughs> <laughs> but it just the digestion was terrible and i was like nah and then i played around and um yeah my gut sang it was my body was vibing i had energy and I really believed in it. So the vibrational levels of like conscious, you know, actually like believing that what you're eating is like, is like, um, you know, um, fulfilling you at a, at a cellular level on, on a nutrient basis. Mm. I really was excited about it. And I just basically developed a product without realizing I was developing a product, just passion. And then I started having it every day and that became one of my go-tos, smoothies and smoothie bowls. I just started loving. Mm. And then all my friends, those that loved me and supported me, were like, you know, you really should make a product out of this. And I kept on saying, I don't have any time. No, no, no. And I, I kind of pushed back until, I think in life, this, we, with, like our body, you know, we get these signs all the time. Your body speaks to you all the time. And, and, and disease really sets in when you ignore it for long enough. That's when you really get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And the same with life and passion and, and where, you, where you put your energy and where you draw your focus is that like, if you conscious enough and listening to your body if you're listening to life um, as it passes you by or as you walk through it like I think that there is there's subtleties everywhere that push you in the right direction and it was really a, about like listening to that and eventually making that shift when enough people that loved me and cared for me um, which is which has also got to do with you surrounding yourself with people that, that you know that serve your better purpose as opposed to people that don't you know so it's mm. in that process of, of 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 really believing in health i also lost some of my best friends in the world which was a really difficult process of learning to let go or what doesn't serve me because they you know people very often see a reflection of themselves in others 
and you know mm. they there was a lot of pushback because i was going against the grain of society back then now gluten-free and gluten-free and all this stuff and vegan and plant-based it's very popular mm. when i started doing it it was anti-popular i was really um um i was given a, gr- a really hard time and i lost friends there was a lot of there was a lot of t- uh, like yeah a lot a lot of um s- sadness and 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 tears that were um i had to really like understand how to how to let those go that didn't serve me and how to surround myself with people that actually keep my true core friends and meet beautiful new people that were interested in similar things and all that sort of stuff and then at the end of the day um i got pushed in the right direction i got the support i needed and um i i quit my career so i was in the family business for almost 10 years and i had ownership my in in the business it was a fine diamond jewelry business so my mom's a top jewelry designer my dad consults in internationally certified loose diamonds they have a beautiful design studio in the waterfront it's a 1977 established business so i was second generation 10 years in had ownership had everything like laid out for me i was really grafting hard in it i knew i could run it and financially i knew i was like kind of like setting myself up to own a successful business and to be honest i, I quite enjoyed it because i love people and it's very much like it's retail it's very much about people design um but it wasn't my passion and it wasn't really making me unhappy but you know sometimes you don't really know you're in the dark until you see the light and once you what you know what you see you can't unsee and once i realized how absolutely passionate i was about this i knew this was my truth and my calling and you can't go back from that so mm. i ended up leaving the family business and i ended up um first i did it on this on on the weekends and for a year on weekends and evenings and i set up a smoothie stand at the Ronnie's City Farmers Market at at Helen Zilla's residence which oh, was wow. such a it was such a vibe I love markets when I travel I always go to markets whenever I'm traveling in like Africa or Southeast Asia it's always markets and food and I was I'd always dreamt of being on the other side of the counter like actually being one of the vendors and I really enjoyed the waking up at the crack of dawn pushing the wheelbarrow down and setting up my little um my little space and I did that and and that that was the the birth of the brand and then from there after about a year of just hustling on the sides and the weekends and learning and just pushing and just just enjoying it and not hustling to like to make money because i still had a job but hustling to just make change my life to make my passion a reality i left the family business um i gave ownership back to my parents and i thanked them for everything i didn't ask them for any money in return and i just um i went ahead on this journey and that was 5 years ago and my whole life is changed since then and now uh, yeah i could never even imagine myself now living my old life <laughs> sure that's that's incredible uh there's so many so many points from from all of that that i want to touch on but that's really cool to hear and i, I think i can relate to some of you listening to you it's like it's it's puts me at ease it's like ah oh, okay uh for me personally a couple of years ago it must have been about 6 years ago started looking into also to health and, and all this and I, I went plant based I went vegan and back, back then it also vegan people didn't even know what that meant yeah. it was uh, yeah. which is, it's great to see now how how everything is is blowing up in terms of wellness it really is cool yeah um but when you start to see things that you realize okay this is going to benefit my life and, and you start to make changes and you do start to get push back from the, some of the people around you or, yeah. or there is that 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 fear that you got to kind of push through to to pursue what what you're passionate about and what what's going to actually ultimately serve you and going through the health journey myself in the last few years and you unfortunately will lose people in your life or you will you will that that, that will happen um and i wanted to I wanted to touch on the with well, it came to Wazuga specifically back then i was like okay i was really getting into the health stuff and and um I used to normally gym and all that and normally yeah. use normal protein shakes but not even looking what's in them now I look at it and I'm like oh my word look at all those crazy things that's yeah. in there yeah. uh, and when I saw your product I was like I looked at the ingredients and it's very it's very rare that even nowadays I look at ingredients and I'm like wow okay there's no like weird things in there that's additives that's no this and that no 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 cut, no cut corners like you just there's no point mm. what's the point I don't understand apart from maybe making more money um I don't understand why people have to feel the need to um put these weird flavorings or stabilizers in a lot of products that don't actually require it on a on a nutritional science level yeah. so i see them i'm like why is that even there that product would be stable without it like mm. i don't know if it's an extra layer of, of of precaution um or shelf life extension or whatever but we've had no problem getting by without any of that stuff and mm. feels much better not to have it you know definitely yeah. uh, 
the more you, what I find is the more you actually get in touch with your body and, and your response to specifically foods and, 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 and all of that, you, you immediately notice when something's been put in your body that's not right. 100%. And uh, it happened recently with me and my girlfriend. We bought, uh, I was at Macro and I decided to get a, a normal plant-based protein, but it was like a USN brand or something. I was like, no, this is a cool flavor. Mm. So it shouldn't be too bad. Immediately, like, you just feel like nauseous, sick. I was like, I'm going straight back to the, the good stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's becoming more aware and aware of your body as well and your body has response to, to these things. And yeah. it's nice to see that you guys haven't compromised on what you're putting into your product because it's... It still feels like a not a not a big commercial product that's just been mass produced. It's, yeah. it's, it's nice to see. Uh, well, actually, we have a lot of our ingredients that are harvested from the wild. Okay. So between like twenty and forty percent of Wazoogles, uh, people don't actually know this, but it's it's wild wild harvested. And also, there's a very I believe in like business for I believe in business for profits. So, so like, it has to be sustainable and has to be able to pay your staff. You have to be able to pay yourself. You have to, you know, live. We live in a society that requires you to have money, but also um, for conscious, a conscious positive exchange. And I believe that you can, you can do both. So we, we, um, the facility that manufactures Wazoogles also feeds um, up to 600 kids between six months old and 16, 16 years old um, every week at a creche. Um, which has an amazing story right behind um, where we are, where our warehouse and our offices are, which is um, Capricorn Park. And um, a lot of our, in our supply chain, I've, I've done all the sourcing and the supply chain myself, and we have like a lot of cool stories of small farmers that this, that their stories of farming have changed their life. And they have like um, um, sustenance programs where they support micro enterprise farmers, as well as like have female empowerment programs where they hire women from villages. Um, the baobab is collected from Limpopo, and it's been able to help build schools and houses in the, in the rural villages. Like, so you can just go and you know some of our suppliers are bigger. Obviously, they, they don't all have amazing pretty stories, but some of them do, and 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 it's really cool to be able to build something that works that's sustainable that you, you know that hopefully you can make a, a lifestyle and a business out of it but at the same time it's not just focused around profit and money it's mm. holistic it's the whole picture from the seed all the way to to the fruit. like it has to feel good so we're by no means perfect but um we're, we're, i'm really passionate about building something that i can be proud of mm. not just about the exit you know definitely yeah. working working within your local communities and like you say supporting that community we're chatting about community earlier and i think it's such yeah. an important important topic um just wanted to quickly ask for those people who don't know like superfoods and sometimes i'm just like i just know that they're all, all great and i, I yes. add them to my my daily um intake of, of foods how do you describe a superfoods and specifically some of the stuff that you put into your powders like what what defines a superfood and what what are the properties that you would say yeah it's a, it's a really good question and it's a really relevant question for right now because everyone's jumping on the uh, plant-based and the superfood bandwagon they're mm. calling everything superfoods yes. and it's actually like a made-up term there's not okay. there isn't a list like in some book that says these are superfoods and these aren't so people are just saying they're superfoods because now it's like greenwashing it's like a marketing mm. thing or whatever yeah. so hello you know <laughs> um so <laughs> so um basically i believe that it's subjective so you get to choose what you believe in and what what isn't what isn't superfoods but it should be defined by um, foods that are sustainable sustainable for the body so then I would say mostly like plant-based products um, that you can eat daily that are good for the body and mostly and most importantly that they have an off-the-chart nutrient density per calorie so if you compare them to um, other other foods like for instance if you t if you took 100 grams of I'm gonna make an extreme example 100 grams of white bread or brown right. bread and 100 grams of let's say kale and you said right they both 100 grams, or sorry, not, 100, not grams, but calories, if you took like 100 calories. So food is energy for the body. So basically the, the calories or the kilojoules you get from food is basically just food converted to energy, it's almost like photosynthesis, you know? So if you look at um, the same amount of energy from food, like 100 calories of this and 100 calories of that, and you look at bread versus kale or blueberries or whatever, and you look at the nutrient density per calorie, and one will be off the charts. Now, everyone is eating a similar-ish amount of calories, of energy, depending on how much they expend, how, how much they weigh, and how much they require in order to get up and to be active and to be a human being during the course of the day. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get some people that are existing on like 
500 calories and other people on 5,000 calories. It just doesn't work like that. And within that intake of food that converts to energy that allows you to be a human being and do, do things on this planet, um, you, the basis is you're trying to maximize your nutrient int uh, uh, intake so that you can um, fuel your body on a cellular level. So what are superfoods? Superfoods are those things that pack a massive punch in my mind, per calorie. So if you look at, for instance, um, something like uh, Moringa or Spirulina or Baobab, um, they have huge amounts of micronutrient values, um, high vitamin C and high calcium and high iron and omegas or hemp and all that sort of stuff, much higher than some of the other foods that are known for it. Like even if you compare like Moringa leaves to oranges, like they're seven times more vitamin C than actual oranges have, and goji berries versus carotene and carrots and all that sort of stuff. So they're just these kind of things that are really, really extremely um, powerful when it comes to nutrient, nutrient mm -hmm. dense. And also, a lot of time people think they're quite expensive, but you've got to realize that when you dehydrate something, as a lot of the time they come dehydrated, mm -hmm. you're removing, on average, with plants, you're moving about 90% of the water weight. So um, 100 grams of goji berries is equivalent to like a kilo of fresh goji berries. And if you went and bought a kilo of fresh fruit, it would be 10 times more and it would be a lot more expensive. So when you look at like a 200 gram box of superfoods or you look at like a little bag, you've got to understand that like the water has been taken out, but the nutrients have been retained and they are mostly like not 100%, but they are mostly retained in that drying process because it's usually a low heat process. And you, you've you got to realize that they had to start with about 10 times more food in order to end up with a dehydrated product. Sure, that's that's a brilliant answer. Thank you for like articulating that so well. Uh, I I try not to like hold back when it comes to buying products because there is this this I suppose stereotype that it's it's too expensive to be healthy. Yeah. Um, these products are too expensive, and uh, to some degree they are, but people don't understand what you've just explained. Yeah. And it's 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 almost crucial that you add these things somewhat into your life. Um, it's the way you explain it now makes it seem crazy to not be spending the money on, on, on these products. Yeah, um, I mean, the way that I see it is that I don't like to prescribe that health must be boxed or anything mm -hmm. must be housed. So yes, I completely believe in my product mm -hmm. and I believe in a lot of other products out there, but I believe that what we're doing, because I know what we're doing and I know who we're sourcing from and I know that like our Moringa is grown via a small permaculture go up and co-op in Ghana and I know that it's like, it's the best you can get. I know our spirulina is regularly tested for heavy metals because spirulina is not a plant. It's an algae and it's very exposed to environmental contaminants like water toxicity because it absorbs. It's basically algae that grows on top of water. So our baobab is harvested wild. Our, our mosquitoes harvested from the wild. You can't get better. So obviously I, I trust our products, but I also don't want to force people into thinking that they need superfoods in order to thrive. Like we... We are lucky in a world today that where we can have access to these things, which primarily very often aren't from our um, from our environment. Like so a, lot, a lot of these things are from South America or whatever, whatever. Some of them are local, but you know, if you really don't have the budget for superfoods and you're just conscious about what you eat, like you can eat an amazingly clean, whole food based, plant based diet for probably the same price or less expensive than your current diet. Mm. It's totally possible mm. and you shouldn't have to be able to spend more money in order to invest in your health, but mm. you do need to invest time. You just okay. do. If you want to save time and go for fast food, then you're not going to get away with the same quality. So people say, I don't have the time. And I say, no, you don't have the priority. Mm. You, you prioritize what you want in life. If you want to get up early and go for a run, you make the time. Yeah. So if you want to invest in your sleep, you go to bed earlier. So it just depends on like, if you're willing to put in the work, like everything in mm. life, there's no shortcuts to the real things. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, organics, uh, while you were chatting, I was thinking about that. It's the same, it's the same thing. Before in my life, I, I knew organic food was better, but I didn't know why it was better or how it was better and, and like what the reasoning was behind it. So I was always like, you know what? My life's too busy to try and source organic veg, you know. Yeah. Whereas now we get our veg religiously from a market in Philadelphia once yes. a week, and um, but it's a process of realizing that it's not just like oh organic okay I'm gonna implement that now. You got to make it a priority because once you realize, once you research and you realize that the the food industry is also not the greatest at the best of times, yeah. and, and just being aware and being conscious of exactly what you actually put in your body and the nutrient value. I think somebody was telling me even something like a carrot, like. An organic carrot versus a normal carrot, like the amount of 
the, the difference is insane. It's something like seven yeah. times more nutrients or something. Or Yeah, I think it changes from food to food, but uh, it's definitely more nutrient dense when you get organic. And the reason why is because um, there's more mineralization in the soil. So generally in commercial farming, they don't replenish the soil. And that's like a 101 of farming. It's even in the Bible. Like, okay. I'm not a religious person, but like it's, it goes all the way back to the Bible days where you should replenish your soil after a certain amount of harvest. Mm. And when you don't, because it costs a lot of money, the soil ends up becoming a little bit like um, devoid of nutrients mm. and, and less alive. And because they're monocropping, because they're planting one crop and not, you know, when you, mm. let's say, do look at biodynamic or permaculture, they plant numerous different crops that work with each other and they, they do it in, har in harmony of nature. Like if you go into a forest, you never see just like an entire section of one trees unless it's been cut down and you know, it's been like planted like that for, for, for some industry. But um, at the end of the day, um, the, the nutrient density is definitely higher because of the quality of the soil and then the quality of the end product, the plant or the fruit. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, what I would do is if, you, if, if, you want, if you're interested in eating organic, but you're just not really sure and it's a mission and whatever, what I would do is like a nice little hack because life's busy and there's so many things that you could do is I'll just Google the dirty dozen. Just the 12 dirtiest um, vegetables and fruits out there. And those are the ones that are the softest flesh and the sweetest, like tomatoes and blueberries and maybe um, leafy greens. Those are the ones that are hard to grow without pests, like basically getting to them. And then they have to spray them with more chemicals. And those chemicals are, are pretty damaging for your, mm. for your endocrine system, for your hormone system. And so I would just say, okay, cool. Well, I'm not gonna be perfect, but you know, let me try a little bit. Let me look at the dirty dozen and let me just be conscious that I know what these are. So when I'm shopping, I try to look for organic, at least in these things. Because sometimes for like a watermelon or like a sweet potato or whatever, it actually might not be that much more nutrient dense. It's not seven times for everything. Yes. It's some more than others. So cool. you look at the nutrient density you're getting from some organic um, 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 produce. And then you're also looking at the pesticide residue you're getting from others that are more highly hev and heavily sprayed, like celery, for instance. Um, is like 90% water mm. and everyone's frothing on celery juice. Celery mm. juice, celery juice, it's a huge thing at the moment. Yeah, I went through that. <laughs> I, I, would, I would guarantee you that maybe 95% of South Africa that celery juicing is doing it from non-organic celery and I would say that because yeah. celery soaks up so much water because it is so much water, a lot of the problem in the chemicals are a runoff problem. So they spray, they don't all get absorbed into all of the plants but when the, the plants get watered it all goes into the soil so it's a runoff into your water systems. But celery absorbs a lot of water from the soil will absorb more chemicals so if you're going celery juice just go i'm either not going to juice or i'm going to juice organic celery and make a hard rule around that mm. and so you've got to educate yourself like everything in life to understand the big picture and the way that things are and then make those decisions that serve you best that's that's really good to hear because like i said i, I, I was into the celery juice and i yeah. just find it phenomenal but once i got into organic i realized you mentioned earlier with the gut health and the mm. glyphosates and these chemicals and the, like once you look into that and what it's doing to our bodies <laughs> it's, it's deep it's deep <laughs> it's so deep, yeah. it's like i don't want to be putting any of that stuff in my body um so now i'll only do organic if i do celery juice but um yeah i've started i i felt i feel like as a society we've got it's quite a disconnect between where our food how our food is produced and like how we have you know in, intake it yeah. uh or absorb it or yeah eat it and I, so I, we've started a vegetable garden at home and we've cordoned up the whole area and like just that learning process and actually understanding the soil and the cycles and it's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. And it's, I suppose, to some degree, getting that gap between the food production and you know, when we eat it, understanding and realizing it's all got an effect what we put in our body. Yeah, it's, uh, 100%. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. I want to quickly change, change uh, avenues quickly uh, and, and before you leave, chat to you about something we chatted about earlier, which I think is fascinating. You currently live in a kind of nomad lifestyle where you're surfing and you, 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 you're able to work digitally. So you're able to produce um, this brand and, and create it. And, but at the same time, you, you live in a life that I look at and I'm like, this is really cool what you're doing. Chat to me about the possibilities of that because I I would assume when I go see a product like that, I'm like, wow, the guy, the business behind this must be a big corporation and, uh, you know, that whole kind of lifestyle. I didn't realize you could create something like that and live a life that you are living, which is great. Yeah. How do you, what are the challenges you find with that, um, doing the digital lifestyle uh, and then the, the pros? I mean, the freedom must be quite amazing. And, and tell me your, your other interests and how you, how you incorporate your business with your life. Like, how do you get the best of both worlds? Well, I mean, I, I've been, I had like sort of 
you can call it an epiphany when I met someone that truly inspired me on a level where I needed to make a shift, where I needed, I was searching for that inspiration in 2016, 2017. And in 2017, about six months later, after I'd like uh, really worked hard towards achieving this goal, I decided to take the risk. So a lot of it is is about, it's it's a a change in perception or perspective. It's a mind shift change. And I went to go live in Bali in India for six months. Um, and a lot of people t- warned me, oh, you've just launched in Diskim. This is bad. This is not a good time to be going. Like, you guys are just expanding. Like, I don't know. And I, I, my response was, you know, there's no time like now. It's never going to get easier. It's, it's, I'm going to continue working hard in order to create something beautiful and, and something that grows. So um, I think that a lot of it's got to do with fear. This whole COVID thing, work, working digitally, working from home. So I've been working from my computer digitally since 2017. So this is like you know, year four for me. Um, and um, I think technology is really important. Like, so you got to have the right systems in place. Um, and then um, I think a lot of people are really, um, you've seen how the world has pivoted to working from home mm-hmm. fairly easily. Mm-hmm. And I think most of it comes from like, a mindset change so I think there's a lot of fear around it so people are like well I, you know I see those people doing it but I don't know if I could do it and, mm. and I think that you have to just you have to be able to overcome that obstacle that obstacle of fear and and just step into the unknown because you know what they say they said that growth is at the edge of your you know your comfort zone so um, it doesn't it's not that easy it depends on what you're doing you know for instance a pilot there's an airplane someone needs to fly it you can't do that from your computer. Mm. Um, at least not yet. <laughs> <laughs> One day. One day it will yeah. happen. But yeah. So, but, um, so I think there is, I'm very passionate about lifestyle design. Um, mm. and, and for me, I, I definitely touch base with my team. I have a phenomenal team. I work really hard. But at the same time, I try and find that work-life balance. And there's been times where I've been like obsessed with what I'm doing and, and not had any balance and working too hard. And even though I might be doing it from some beautiful place with really good waves, it still is graft every day. So I think at the end of the day, um, there's no cr- crazy trick. I've just done the research, I've invested in like good communication technology. Like, you know, you can look at Slack and you can do all that sort of stuff. I've, when I need to touch base with my team and do training or do product development and make sure that there's like really good company culture, I think is really important. Like, I think a lot of the time people struggle because they don't really 100% believe in what they're doing and they're just doing it to make a living. And then if you don't believe in it, then your people, your team, they can't buy into something if you haven't bought into it. I'm fully committed to what I do and I live and eat and breathe it. And I think that my team, that we have a phenomenal, beautiful team of 12, they see that. They see how committed I am and they see how much I believe in it. And we've built that company culture like at Wazoogles. We have a full uh, smoothie bar. So there's a chest freezer full of amazing mm. like steamed and cut and frozen and um, vegetables and fresh fruit and ginger and all that sort of stuff. There's unlimited Wazoogles, supernatural oats and superfood protein blends. And whether you are um, on the floor picking and packing boxes or whether you are head of finance, it's like it's all the same for everyone. We're all part of a family and everyone gets to, um, you know, everyone gets to have unlimited superfood smoothie bowls and all that sort of stuff in-house. And the thing is, is that that, that you know, sharing is, is awesome, but it's also about inspiring people to like let them understand that like understanding why you do what you do and why you believe in it. And I could change some of like some like one guy that works for us. He was our driver. And he's just, we've just promoted him now um, to, 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 uh, to inbound controller in our warehouse. And like he always want, wanted to open his own restaurant and he's an aspiring chef. So we have like plant-based Fridays where we, cook, we take our favorite meals and we make them plant-based and we do a round robin and everyone gets the opportunity to create that meal and to feed, cook for everyone and to build community around that. And at the same time, he's having superfood smoothies every morning for the first time in his life and he's feeling the effects he's losing weight. So he's like, whoa, maybe I should like start running. So now he's starting running every morning and then we went on a team hike the other day at the end of a year function and I was like Lest I'll buy you a wild card so you can come running and take your families into all the access to all the nature reserves and camping and everything but my only deal with you is you've got to use it a certain amount of times per year and if you don't then you've got to pay for it but if you do then I'll pay for it so all I want from you is authenticity and if you want it it's yours so I think like sharing your passion and your belief with others I think that like that all stems back to community and like like you know you can't you can't have everything you want and take it only for yourself and expect everyone to just dance to your tune it doesn't work like that mm. you know so i think building something that you believe in 
and inspiring people and sharing the passion with others and empowering them and, and investing in other people to be uh, you know the best version of themselves and, and and we have such a beautiful country with so much opportunity that's where the that's where the good zone is that's where things really start to become a little bit magical you know that's that's incredible and i thought we were touching on earlier before this we're talking about authenticity and in a world that's so full of you can find anything to do with anything anywhere now and and people respect and resonate with that authenticity and yeah. creating something fear i know you mentioned stepping out of your comfort zone and like i think we all doubt ourselves and we all have these limiting beliefs around I mean, what it is we can do and we can, what we can achieve before you ever started was would you have ever thought that you could get to the place where you're at now with it you know i, I listen to gary v gary mm. vanishak a lot yeah. online and people ask him and like how do you know if you're a natural entrepreneur and he says if you're asking that question you aren't one you know he said so like you have to have that like that 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 um that that clarity to to just to just go it has to feel right and um i think the same thing goes with um with with with, with a, a lot in life like you you learn a lot along the way and so for me like it was never a, a question of doubting myself i think i think i'm a natural born entrepreneur and i think and i have that self-belief and i i so yeah, so I did from the beginning. I did believe that I would get here mm -hmm. and beyond, and okay. that that that's a natural drive that I've got in me. Not everyone's the same, mm -hmm. but at the same time, and that doesn't make me special. Just it just makes me me. And there's lots of different versions of 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 of, of that psychological build, and mm -hmm. you just got to find what resonates best with yourself, like okay. for yourself. But um, for me, it wasn't about whether I thought that I'd be able to get here. It was more about. I think um, understanding what the process looked like. So I had no idea what the process yeah. would look like. And that has completely just, that stumped me so many yeah. times along the way. So I, th I had this naive idea of like, oh, I'll just do this and I'll have this brand and, and I'll just do the marketing and I'll get other people to like manufacture it for me and other people to sell it for me. And then and then it'll just be cool and easy. And it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not easy. It's been one of the hardest, like I don't want to use the word slog because I've enjoyed the process, but it's been one of the deepest journeys of my life. I've worked so much harder than I was working when I was working in an established business. It's not for the faint hearted, but that is the stuff that pushes you out of your comfort zones. And that's the stuff that like is constantly pushing you into a zone where you're learning more about the world and more about yourself. So I would say like, I totally believed my aim was always like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this like properly. And I also think that like there's power in, in, in belief in yourself. So like if you, if you believe that you're going to like, that's what they say, like, you know, you know, what do they say? Reach, um, reach, like aim, f I can't even remember the saying, but it's like, you know, aim really high so that you can achieve something like, even if it's a little bit learn at the end of the day, it's like, um, if you do like, if you do set a goal for yourself, I believe like there's a really good chance that you'll, that you'll, um, achieve it. But uh, for me, the biggest, um, obstacle to the way has been, how to achieve it and how to overcome all the obstacles in, in, in your way because it's actually been quite a real, like it's beaten me down a couple times. It's not been all like perfect and like I live everywhere and I surf and everything's cool. No, there's, I've been challenged to the max and, and back, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything because it's been an interesting journey and it continues to be. And I think the moment something doesn't excite you and, and, and the moment it's not interesting, is the moment you start stagnating. So I think in order to like keep moving and, and have energy moving and, and be passionate about things, you have to be challenged. Even in relationships with, with your partners, like if it's just easy forever, then that's cool and, 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 and that's fine. But if you are someone that really wants to like just learn and grow um, and be challenged and take a step back and take a step forward, then, mm. then, 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 the, then the entrepreneurial journey and or something like this might be for you, okay. you know? That's, I, I've been one of those people that's grown up and I've always been, I'm, I suppose it's a limited belief, but it's always like, I'm not a businessman, it doesn't interest me, I'm not an entrepreneur, I could never do that, you know, I'm, I'm more of a skilled worker. Yeah. So I've always had these doubts in my mind, like, even now with this journey, um, it's like, I, I can't really create anything else besides what I do, you know, and it's, it's, it's great listening to you because it's, it re like, reinforces that you know you can achieve what you want to achieve like i'm not a businessman but i can learn to be i can learn to be in marketing and what to do, what is what it entails and there's all these aspects that you assume you'd need to go out and get a degree in to be able to do but you can just start and, and and if you have that vision i suppose like you say you can you can achieve it i think if you aren't a natural business person then you, you, you don't have the odds stacked against you 
in, 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 in the way I look at it is in a financial aspect, in the very much like a capitalist world, you may have a little bit of the odds stacked against you. But in the when when you're looking at um, aspects of the soul, which is really the, the definition of purpose, um, spirit, happiness, mm. and, and the, 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 the enjoyment of the actual pursuit of the journey, you actually have you actually have a huge advantage mm. because you just have to search for something that actually truly resonates with you. And then when you find that, you'll get all the acceleration power you need to achieve all your goals and all everything that you want to build for yourself and you will be able to build that. But you won't be able to like shortcut and hack yourself. And a lot of people that are really natural and good at business, they can they can sell themselves short and sell anything because they're good at it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I think you have the beautiful advantage of actually being forced to start um, from a very solid foundation you find something that that actually truly excites you and then if you really really love what you do and you're really good at it um, or you become really good at it or you want to you have the drive and I believe like most people out there have the have the ability to to achieve like incredible success but it's it's got to be it's got to be the right fit for them and then you'll smash it mm. hundred I'm like hundred percent believer uh, that's yeah the the sole sole purpose and and what you what you speaking to now like I can attest to that and, and to some degree getting the external success and you have the money and you have the, the perceived success that you know you kind of value growing up and it takes kind of getting to that and just completely feeling completely unfulfilled and like okay bigger questions and yeah. it's it's there's, there's something to be said for yeah finding something that excites you and then drives you and then you'll find a way to make it work whereas that's everything yeah it's it's really like so so much of our parents generation are uh, found left wanting when they retire because they they've been promised that if they climb the ladder and buy the nice house and the white picket fence and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff that they'll that they'll be happy and then at the end of the day they dedicate so much of their time to their career and it's not actually maybe what they are designed to do or what their passion what their what their soul's purpose is that they found they left wanting because they haven't actually invested in other aspects of of themselves along the way and then when they retire they like have money in the bank hopefully and they they still don't have happiness because you know money can't, just can't buy happiness it just it just can't and you hear that over and over but yet most people make the decision to be tricked uh, by the the most classic trap of all times which is like if i if i just carry if i just do that and if i just make that and if i can just afford this then i'll be but you know the 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 the, the process is in the journey and you can't disconnect it you, you you like if you look at nature like you can't just you can't just say like if i just like sidestep this and this then i'll get to the fruit like you have to go from seed all the way through and, and i just that's part of the process not to say that it's going to be perfect but i just don't think you can just um take one singular thing like money and say i want to focus on that and then i'll get to this this and that and happiness like yes i'm not saying like that money isn't important because you need to pay your bills mm. but i think that you have to look at it from like and it, it goes back to like basically the foundations of the brand it's like it's a, it's an holistic outlook okay it's whole food based it's the mm. whole thing it's non non extraction and processing and all that sort of stuff so you're not isolating yeah. and extracting one thing and saying if i eat this or if i focus on that because i'll get this amount of protein or that amount of nutrition or whatever which is all marketing at the end of the day it's like almost like just focusing on cash and being like if i have this cash then i'll be able to buy these things that will make me happy you know and you, you a lot of the time impressing people yeah. that uh, don't actually at the end of the day really care yeah. uh, i found there's there's a difference between intellectually knowing okay yes it's 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 all about the journey you yeah. can like intellectualize that and be like yeah 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 but you kind of still what but then actually get to a point well for me it, at least where you actually know it you're like hang on that is that's 100 percent true that's it your is, power zone yes yeah when you really realize it, not just know it and be like yeah it's about the journey but you meanwhile you kind of it's actually knowing that and getting yeah. to that point. Of you're an example of the power zone, like right here, right now. You know, you're here doing this because you believe in it and because it's something that has like has sparked something inside of you that you can't ignore and you haven't ignored that. And that 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 is something that I think most people could take a page out of their book and be like, well, you may be less dreaming and, and, and more acting. You can dream, but if you think about something your whole life and you never act on it, then it, it'll never become a reality, you know. Thank you. And it's exciting. It's just yeah. like your souls are vibrating. You're like, 100%. And coming here today, it's like, I know that this is exactly where I need to be today. Yeah. Like, I know that because I know from when I met you a while and just 
when things flow naturally and you're in that zone, it's just, it feels right. I don't know yeah. where it's going, but I love it. And it's been in that zone, which is... Which I is love it, the fact that you said, I don't know where it's going because it's so beautiful to know that you're guided by a feeling and not by a, a physical thing. You know, you're like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it because it feels right. That's something that a lot of people don't do. So it's a, so it's a privilege for me to sit down and share this time with you. So thank you for, for, for having me. Thanks, man. I... I appreciate that. I appreciate you sitting down with me. And I want to I want to I want to end this off with like what is what is a single the one thing that you could say that has expanded your life that whether it be a habit, a practice or something that you've encountered, what would you say that you would suppose advice out there or recommendations or, or something somebody can take away from? Whew, that's a deep question. <laughs> one thing, thing that was like an inflection point in your life or or a habit, daily habit or Um, there's so many things but one thing that's expanded my life um, swimming upstream going against the grain not being not being a part of the flock not doing what everyone else is doing just because everyone else is doing it and that seems like the right thing to do but rather actually like having a little bit more connection with um, what, what, what you're feeling and being able to act a little bit upon that like so i would say sidestepping fear or accepting fear and just you know um being okay with 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 stepping outside of the comfort zone from there yeah huge expansion beautiful thank yeah. you thank you so much and lastly where like if people are interested in the product i know i get it at wellness where else so where can they find my Zoogles and where can they find you and more about the brand so um, you can follow us on Instagram at Wazoogles, Facebook at Wazoogles. Okay. Um, and uh, we've got a website, wazoogles.com, which we're just rebuilding and we're going to try and build a lot more education into it, which like more recipes, more information. Um, so we're really excited about that. That's going to happen in the next few months. And then with regards to where you can buy the product, online on our online store, wazoogles.com, nationwide shipping, but also um, at most health shops in the whole probably in the country, as well as uh, selected spas, um, most diskims, food lovers markets, clicks, um, faithful to nature online. Um, we're probably available in maybe six or 700 locations around, around the country from tiny little cute boutique health shops in little one horse towns that you would never expect all the way to, you know, the diskims and, and the clicks and the food lovers markets. So if you look for the unicorn, you will find it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have come a long way. It's fantastic. And I'm excited to see where Wazoogles goes. And uh, Thanks, Darren. Yeah, thank you so much. I definitely, I would love to, moving forward, learn from you, pick your brain on things, and, and uh, yeah, chat to you a lot more in the future. So thanks so much. Let's do it. Thanks yeah. for having me. Okay, it's a wrap. <laughs>